Food has been ever present in the history of art as a means of staging metaphors, storytelling, documentation, and exploiting socio-political issues. Artists of every culture, class, and discipline have celebrated food as being present or absent, essential or esoteric, as part of life or part of death. Some artists, predominantly contemporary artists, whether by practical necessity, choice, or aesthetic significance and symbolization, have incorporated not only the ideology of food, but also the actual substance of food into their work. As an artist myself, I get it. I understand the refusal of complacency and rather use what you have to make what you want. As parents, we started teaching this notion at early stages of making things like wearable art, sculpture, and collage. This video is a brief and unorthodox look at making prints in the kitchen with food as opposed to more traditional printmaking materials. We'll explore three of the four subcategories of printmaking, stencil, planography, or monotype, and relief printing. I'll admit this is one of the weirder approaches to making work that I've ever taken. However, as the materials are different, the techniques really remain typical to how I work. The way in which I work is a responsive effort, where the first shape or marks on paper inform the next, so on and so forth. When working with wet food and implementing stencil techniques, it became more practical than not to use mylar as my stencil material to prevent painted or sprayed wet food from saturating my print paper. The stencil technique, also known as pochoir, can be done with a short bristled brush called a pochoir brush or pon pon, which absorbs watery media and enables it to displace wet paint, ink, or in this case, soy sauce onto paper. By using varying pressure to release more or less media, one can achieve watercolor-like effects. As you can see, I tape my stencil and printing paper to my work table to prevent the stencil from shifting during printing. This second stencil has smaller holes cut into it, therefore I'm using a smaller pom-pom. If you don't have a pochoir brush, use a cotton ball, a makeup sponge, or your finger. As you can notice, the pochoir brushes tend to soak up wet media fast. Therefore, before I press it through my stencil, I often dab some of it off onto paper or a card to prevent oversaturating my stencil. I would recommend doing the same thing if you're using one of the alternative tools, as mentioned before. If your wet media is gloppy or you did oversaturate, don't hesitate to blot it away with newsprint or a paper towel. This also aids in speeding up the drying time. As we move away from brown condiments, one of the more likely suspects, food coloring, can be highly pigmented but has a very low viscosity, which can be somewhat different to work with as opposed to thick sauces. I'm using a coarse pochoir brush to change up the texture of the shape, something you can easily do with a coarse rag, a handheld broom, doll hair, or even tree leaves and branches. Again, my printing paper and stencil are taped down to prevent shifting, but I also tend to strategically place my hands to keep things flat as I work.
manufactured hard candies such as cake sprinkles, Skittles, Jolly Ranchers, and Suckers are all made with artificial food dyes that can be released when soaked in water or alcohol. One of the tactics that I use for cutting out stencils for specific areas is to use a permanent marker to mark where I want my stencils cut out on mylar that is taped down. Once these marks are made, I carefully lift the mylar up and insert my cutting mat and cut out my shapes. The paper that I'm printing with is Arches 88, a smooth, white, highly absorbent yet unsized paper. One thing that I noticed that with using the pochoir brushes and wet media, the lack of paper sizing, which is the buffer that holds the paper fibers together, caused the paper surface to ball up and in some cases lift. Printing still worked for the most case. However, I think a less absorbent and better sized paper, such as Fabriano, BFK, or Somerset would be a better option. Colorful fruits and vegetables can be soaked, pulverized, and strained to make more natural and muted colors for printing onto paper surfaces. In some cases, the color that is seen in the bowl is radically different on bright white paper, or on different toned papers for that matter. This was the case with these dehydrated strawberries, as well as with herbal teas and berries from behind my house that I tested. Spices have been used for mark making due to their deep rich hues. I tried both dry rubbing spices and wet painting spices to make marks on paper, each producing different results. Dry rubbing spices warranted subtle yet possible tone on paper. For this, I used a cotton ball through a paper stencil. As you can see, diluting dried spices with water yields much stronger results. It is also helpful to know that the viscosity and depths of these mixtures can be altered with the ratio of water to spice used. To mix, I would recommend gradually adding hot water to the dry spice mix to paste up the powder. This technique is similar to mixing fiber reactive powdered dyes in surface design. This also helps to break down the structure of the dried particle so it can absorb as much water as possible. Add more water until desired consistency is achieved. Let sit for 30 to 60 minutes until use.
Similar to powdered spices, coffee or tea can be steeped in hot water to make a colored liquid. Instead of painting or using a pochoir brush, these liquids can also be sprayed onto surfaces. Again, the depth of the tone can be shaped by the water to coffee tea ratio, but also in number of layers applied. In addition to the paper stencils used, anything dimensional or heavy like these metal washers were great stencils, as they came into close contact with the substrate surface, therefore preventing any overspray. The last stencil I made for this print was made to hold bright color, something not found in nature, rather back to the artificial, food coloring gel. Instead of using a pochoir brush, cotton ball, or spray bottle, I thought that the more viscous consistency of this smooth gel truly surrendered itself as wanting to be squeegeed across the stencil. If you have a mini two inch squeegee like I do, use it. But if not, a matte board chip will work. I would recommend taping the stencil down well, but also running the squeegee in the direction of your cutouts to prevent the gel from sneaking underneath your hand cut stencil. Since we are in the kitchen, I will promote the use of wax paper as a monotype plate. It is translucent, thin enough to cut, cheap, and easy to make marks onto. For the area I want to print on, I outline the back of the wax paper with a permanent marker so I can see through to the front side to use. I wanted a bright yellow monotype shape, therefore mustard was the obvious choice. I used a brayer to roll the mustard on, however, one could just as easily smooth it on with their fingertips. After rolling, I wiped the surrounding area clean with a rag to ensure I was only going to print the original shape. Instead of printing just the rolled shape on the wax paper, I drew into it with the end of a brush wondering if Matisse ever thought about using mustard this way. Once the shape was ready, it was simply turned over and laid mustard side down onto the print. I used my fingertips to burnish it down, but a flat spoon will also work if you have one. Remember, any residual color that remains on the printing plate is subject to a ghost print, a lighter version of the first impression. This can be used similarly, partially, or on an entirely different piece of paper to begin a new print. Relief printing is a method in printmaking in which the raised portions of a substrate are inked and printed. This is typically done with woodcut or linoleum blocks. However, if one looks around in their world, items with even superficially raised portions or textures can be printed relief. This is a piece of fabric with a raised texture. Using a brayer and this beautiful brown barbecue sauce, I can attempt to roll only the white stitched areas. Once the fabric is adequately charged with barbecue sauce, 
it can be placed face down onto the print. The fabric can be hand padded or gently rubbed with the back of a flat spoon to impress the color onto the print paper. Once you have completed the burnishing process, remove the fabric shape to reveal the relief print made. Remove all stencils used to see the contained marks. There it is, a 10 layer print made from food. I'm fairly certain that the archival quality of this print may be questionable, but it was a genuine interaction of making, made with a printmaker brain and hands, most likely to be thrown away, but documented to be used at a later time in life when I'm back in the studio. This print has given me perspective on choices, choices of shapes, dark and light field, positive and negative space, on tone and color, and on the reality but love of learning from making things that are weird.